Good morning. Welcome to Wednesday Workshop. I'm at Be So Creative Studios in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I'm Ellen, and today is part two of a two-part uh, series, workshop series, on making a cute little zippered bag. And I always call this my Kindle bag because I originally started making them to put a Kindle reader in. It also fits an iPod, uh, iPad mini. But you, of course, will be able to make your bag any size you like. Um, just measure your object, give it a little ease, maybe half an inch on either side of ease, and then I will show you in the instructions how to do that. Now, we are featuring in this project pre-quilted double-sided fabric. And that is fabric that is pretty on one side, pretty on the other side, and has already been quilted. And last week, we talked about the advantages of making your own pre-quilted fabric. You can purchase it uh, in limited, uh, uh, limited um, you know, uh, choices, but you can make any that you want. And really, just with scraps as you have at home. So if you haven't watched last week's video, go back, find out how to make your own quilted fabric. I'm starting out today with a piece of fabric that I made, uh, the quilted double-sided. And this piece, I'm going to make the Kindle bag this size. So this piece is uh, uh, 14 inches long by 10 inches wide. Which, whatever you want your bag to finish at, you want to add an inch to the length and width for seam allowances. And then the only other thing you'll need besides, you'll need thread that is a color that looks pretty on top of your fabric. So I chose a light uh, purple or lavender thread. And then you are going to need a zipper. And you want to be sure that your zipper is a couple of inches bigger than the width of your fabric. Um, generally, zippers are not that much more expensive if you get a bigger size than a smaller size. And it the, the more extra uh, a hangover that you have over here, the easier this project is going to be to sew. So I like to have two inches. This is a 14 inch zipper, it works perfect on this project. And this is gonna be an exposed zipper. You can see that the zipper is going to show. And here's another little one that I did this morning. And so you wanna choose a color of zipper because the zipper itself is going to be a little accent color in your bag. So I will say that I have not made any of these for a few months and I went ahead and thought, well, I better practice before I come and do the workshop on, uh, on the internet. And so I made this little bag this morning and do you know, I don't even think it took me 20 minutes to make this bag. So uh, I guarantee you, this is gonna be a very quick project for you. So we start out with our pre-quilted double-sided fabric. And the very first thing I'm going to do is at the top end here, I'm going to take my zipper, place it face down. So my zipper pull is underneath here. Align it with the top edge of my fabric. And now I'm going to come over to my machine and I'm going to need to put a zipper foot on my machine. So you will need a zipper foot for this because your zipper foot will allow you to get very close to the teeth over here without the teeth having to go underneath your foot. So I'm on the uh, Baby Luck Brilliant today. So I'm going to set that zipper foot so that the foot is to the right of the needle. And I'm just on the regular uh, default straight stitch with my needle in the center, but you can see that my zipper foot is aligned with the edge of my zipper, and then it's gonna snuggle right up against the teeth of the zipper. Of course, the teeth are on the back side, but it's gonna snuggle right up there, and the stitch I'm going to get is gonna be right next to, and this doesn't seem to be moving. Okay, hold on. Technical difficulties here. I think the last project I did, I had turned the feed dogs down on this. So we need to get the feed dogs back up, sorry.
There they come. So you can see how close that gets to the zipper teeth. And now if I turn the zipper out, I'm going to want to go ahead and put a row of top stitching right next to here. And I'll show you in this one how that looks. There's a little row of top stitching right next to where I sewed the seam onto the zipper. That will do two things. First of all, it leaves a very nice, clean, professional looking finish there. And it also serves to keep the fabric pulled back so that it doesn't reach over and get uh, stuck in your zipper teeth when you're opening and closing the bag. So push that seam allowance over nice and flat. And I can actually, if I flip this around, the, start at the other end, I can just go ahead and do this with my zipper foot right on there. And all I have to do is just kind of eyeball. I'm going to try to stay parallel there, about an eighth of an inch away. I believe you can do it without marking it. And this is why you wanted to start out with thread that's a pretty color that matches your fabric. So there you can see my nice top stitching that I have, and it's going to keep that fabric from getting caught in the zipper teeth. Okay, I'm going to come over to the table here now and show you the next step. This is probably the trickiest part about the bag right here. I now have to sew the zipper to this side over here. So I just folded it straight over. I still have my zipper facing down, it's going to align with the other edge. And here's where I would like to take a few pins because I want to make sure that my edges are lined up perfectly here. And I don't want this to shift at all while I'm sewing, otherwise my bag won't look straight. So I do like to put some pins at the front and at the end, I want to make sure that there's no shifting around. And I think I'm going to put one right in the center as well. And I'll be taking those pins out right as I get up to them to sew. So now I'm going to come back over to the machine. And I'm going to do the same thing now over here. I now have my zipper foot all set up. And I will take the pin out as I go. I don't want to sew over it. Now here's where I want to show you why you need an extra long zipper. If this zipper pull was right here, if the zipper was shorter, I wouldn't be able to continue sewing. The zipper pull gets in the way of my zipper foot. That's why it's nice to have all this extra room so I can sew right to the end and I still have plenty of room there to finish my seam. We now want to do the same thing as before. We want to go ahead and sew this, but we're a little locked in here. So for this one, you're going to need to turn your bag inside out. And actually, so the right side is out, actually. So the right side is out. And for this, it might be easier for you to go ahead and open up the zipper all the way. And then again, I'm going to come over here 
and I need to sew my top stitch. But just because of the angle that I'm at, I am going to need to change my zipper foot over and move it over. And they're designed so that you can put it either on the left or the right. So I'm going to go ahead and move my zipper foot over. If you're on a Bernina machine, you your zipper foot uh, goes right in the center and you shift your needle to the left or the right. So you, it's actually the needle that you're going to move over depending on where you need it. On the baby locks, you actually shift, realign the zipper foot. So again, just close to my edge here. Making sure my seam allowance is tucked in under there. And there's my nice edge. So I'm already starting to see my bag start to come together. I really just need one more thing now, and that's to finish out my edges here. So I need to go back inside out. And right here, you have a decision to make. If you want your bag to be a flat bag where the zipper is down here about an inch away. Um, you're going to fold this down like this. But you also have the option of making a bag where the zipper is at the very top, a more traditional looking cosmetic bag. And in order to have the zipper at the very top, of course, you're going to then just make sure that your zipper is right up here at the very top. And you want to fold it so the zipper teeth are right on top. Now, the only disadvantage of this is it is awfully thick here when you sew through this. And when you turn it to the right side, you will get a slight little um, bevel right here. It's just impossible to get a really square edge there. There are some ways to do it uh, with other techniques. But for this method, you just pretty much have to put up with a little bump there. But I've even purchased bags and gotten them nice one cosmetic bags at makeup counters, and they have that little bevel. It's just, um, it's just something that has to happen with that zipper. But for this one, I want to go ahead and I'm going to make it into more of the Kindle bag. So in order to do that, I want to go back to the table here because you do want to be sure that you get a nice flat fold here. So I like to take my hem guide here. I want that fold to be about an inch away from the very center of my zipper. So there's the center of my zipper. I need to come down a little bit more with that fold here. Maybe a little bit more. So either an inch or an inch and a fourth, this one is an inch, and I kind of like that look. So from the top edge of the fold to the very center of the zipper teeth is one inch. And here again, I do like to pin. And where I'm going to pin is over here on the side seams. I like to pin through that zipper, those zipper teeth. I mean, not the teeth, but through the zipper tape, making sure that my edges are straight here. And then over here as well, I'm going to measure, make sure I have exactly an inch there. And I'm going to pin over here as well. right through the tape. The next step is very, very important. If you don't open up this zipper before you sew this seam, you will have sewn yourself completely closed and you will have no way of getting in there. So maybe just before I finally pin that, I'm going to take the zipper and open it up about halfway. 
or maybe a little bit over halfway. And then I'm going to come back over here and repin my zipper tape so that it doesn't shift on me. So there's how it needs to look so that you have an opening that you'll be able to pull uh, through and go over to the right side. So I am ready to go. Now for this next step, I'm just going to sew a regular seam. So I'm going to take my zipper foot off and go ahead and put my regular sewing foot back on. And that is the J foot for the Baby Lux, or the one foot for the Berdinas. And it is time to sew. Now, another reason that we got an extra long zipper is there are metal stops on both edges of your zipper. Here's the metal stop at the bottom. Here are the metal stops at the top. And I don't want those anywhere near my needle. The needle cannot go through those without breaking. It can, however, go through these nylon zipper teeth, provided you have a nylon zipper, of course, very easily. So you do not need to worry about sewing right over those zipper teeth. So for this, I do about a half of an inch seam allowance, which just happens to be right at the edge of my presser foot. So that's what I use to measure. And I'm going to start at the top edge here. I'm going to sew a few stitches and then go backwards so that I can secure that corner and then sew back on. And that way I've triple stitched that corner in place. Remove your pins as you go. And here I go right through those zipper teeth, no problem at all. When you get to the bottom, you want to also reverse. Now for the other side, On I go, reversing and back on. Reverse at the top. I can now trim off my excess zipper tape and I can do it over here now as well. I like to come over here and just trim the corners at a 45 degree angle. Stay away from your stitching. You don't want to trim into your stitching, but it just takes a little bulk off of those corners. Right here and right here. And the last thing I want to do, and this is optional, but I do like to finish the raw edge over here. Uh, I like to, when my bag opens up, I like to just have a little bit of a clean finish right there. So you can do that with your a short zigzag stitch, or if you watched my Wednesday, Wednesday workshop a couple of, or actually it was a Tuesday tips that we did a few weeks ago, I show you how to use your overcasting stitch um, on your machine. And my overcasting stitch is stitch number 13. And whoops. There we go. And my overcasting foot, what this will do is just leave a nice clean edge like that. I'll do it on the other side. Yeah. 
and that way I don't have to worry about fraying. I'll trim my threads here and I'm ready to turn this to the right side. This is a little trick from Nancy Zemer, Zeman on her Nancy's Notions. If you stick your finger right up into that corner and then take your thumb and bend that seam allowance over, you end up getting a really nice sharp little corner as you push out. The same thing here at the very tip top. And there is my beautiful bag. If you would like to take your corner turner, just do be careful because we have to trim those corners very, very short, but you can just um, push out a little bit, just gently, gently, just to get your corners nice and sharp. If you do take this to the ironing board, use a press cloth, but if you take this over with a press cloth, and give it a nice press, it's gonna be really flat and just beautiful. And I'll tell you, that's a gift you're gonna give that you're gonna be proud of to say, I made this myself. You can do it in any size. Um, because you're making your own pre-quilted fabric, you could do this in somebody's favorite baseball or football team fabric. You can, of course, embellish it with your machine embroidery, put names on it. You can decorate it any way you like, and um, people are just going to love it. I'll tell you, I've given so many as gifts. Everybody appreciates them. So easy to do. We will have the instructions available for this, and uh, I hope you will make one and send us a picture. We would love to see it. Thank you so much for joining us today.